Upstate Medical University in Syracuse, New York, invites you to be the informed patient with the podcast that features experts from Central New York's only academic medical center. I'm your host, Amber Smith. Today, I'm talking about food, specifically hospital food, with two of the people who oversee the food operation at Upstate Medical University. Daniel Ellathorpe is the Senior Director of Food Services, and Eric Adams is the System Director of Food Service and Hospitality. Welcome to the informed patient, both of you. Morning, Amber. Thanks for having us. Thank you. I want to give listeners an idea about the scale of the food operation at Upstate. About how many people do you feed per day? So, in our patient services format, we serve about anywhere on average from 325 to 350 patients per meal. So, it's about 1,050 people per day just in the patient meal side. So that's just patients, but you may also have visitors and then employees, right? Correct. So during our retail operations, on average, a Monday through Friday, I mean, we'll have uh, about anywhere from 1,600 people go through the register. It says how many rings are actually put through. So they could be buying anywhere from a soda to a muffin to a full course meal. It sounds like you're busy from before sunup probably until after sundown. Correct. Yeah, and on the weekends, our probably transactions are about half of that on a Saturday and a Sunday. So how early does your breakfast shift arrive to start preparing the food for the day? So our cooks come in at 4.30 in the morning. Our patient services breakfast meal begins service at 7 o'clock in the morning, and our retail cafe operations begin at 6 in the morning. So you probably at 4.30 start making breakfast foods and things like that, but you probably also start with lunch and afternoon meal too, right? That doesn't usually start till around uh, 7, 7.30 uh, for lunch. Then like our dinner meals will start around 10.30, 11 o'clock. Can you walk us through how hospitalized patients get their meals these days? Well, from start to finish, I can kind of run through the uh, we have what we call a patient dining associate, and they are assigned to certain floors. And when they go up to the floors or to the units, they visit the patient in the room and will take their menu. We do have a standardized menu that we use, but it features chef specials for each day for each meal. So they'll kind of walk the patient through what our options are and what we have, uh, and they'll take the order. And then from that point, the order is put into our meal ordering system. And when it's actually time to prepare the meals or the trays, they print off the tickets for that unit that they're assigned to, and then they'll start producing the trays. They put everything on the tray from the hot food or cold entree, whichever ones they decide, to their silverware, their drinks, any side uh, fruit or dessert that they have. Once all those trays are completed for that whole unit or floor, they bring the cart, they Put, first of all, put all that in the cart and they bring it upstairs and then they pass it out to every patient that they've taken their order for. About an hour after that, they'll go through and pick up all the dirty trays after. And then it kind of runs into that cycle again for the next meal. So what happens to people who maybe are in the emergency room waiting for a bed to become available? Do they get a meal service in the emergency room? They do. There's two different options there. I mean, we do supply what we call like a house tray. So our house trays typically are chef special for that day because we don't have anybody that can actually get down there and take those orders. So we do supply meals for those folks while they are there during the meal time. And if they happen to come in after operations for us have closed like 11 to 7 in the morning, there is what we call box lunch down there that has like a turkey sandwich and pretzels and a beverage and a cookie for them to have until they either get moved to the floor or a hot meal for the next meal. How often is it that you need to accommodate a special diet for someone who may have to eat a special diet when they're in the hospital, pureed food or low sodium, things that are medically required? A lot. Yeah, you know, that's a big part of the patient meal services because there are many people that come in with different diets, you know, and the different consistencies of food that they need to have. When we design our menu that has our chef specials on it, it is meant to hit a lot of different diets, whether it's low fat, low sodium, low cholesterol. Those are all kind of built in when we create those menu items. And I want to say currently there are like 20 different diets that we have here. 
whether it be low fat, low salt, low cholesterol, you know, you got the diabetic diets and there's probably three or four different tiers within those. Now you have the gluten-free diets, you have vegan and stuff of that nature. So it's pretty vast. This is Upstate's The Informed Patient Podcast. I'm your host, Amber Smith. I'm talking to Eric Adams and Daniel Ellathorpe, who are both involved in the food operations at Upstate Medical University. Well, Mr. Ellathorpe, both you and Mr. Adams have experience in the food industry and in healthcare. So I wanted to ask you what trends you've seen over the years in terms of what things have changed in the industry. Mr. Adams? Sure. I've been doing this for the last 13 or 14 years, and man, there has definitely been a lot of changes. I think as far as patient services go, room service has been the biggest thing for patients. Kind of like when you're in a hotel, you're hungry, you look at the menu and you order what you want. But obviously within the hospital, if you do have a certain diet that you need to adhere to, that is followed as well. It's something that we're working on to do here. We'd like to do that here at the hospital uh, at Upstate, as well as the community, because it is a huge patient satisfier. So I think that is a, a trend that hospitals are trying to get to. I think that just stuff like Dan's talking about gluten-free and vegan have become very popular. We just started selling a lot of vegan sandwiches and other types of meals in the cafeteria, and it's going like crazy. So. Just the different types of diets, I think, are just progressing. I was going to ask if there's a particular food that is popular these days that you're getting requests for, but vegan apparently is popular, right? It is. Yeah, I'd have to say a lot of people just didn't know that they had like a gluten allergy before, but that seems to be a pretty predominant ask or a diet that people need nowadays. In addition to what Eric was saying, whole grains are kind of a big part of people's mindset and what they want to eat now too. For people that don't see something that they like in the cafeteria, do you see a lot of food deliveries from restaurants coming to the hospital or is that even allowed? I can take that one. I think that every single person, you know, us on this call, everybody, everybody eats a little different. We have, I think we have a ton of options in the cafeteria. I think that if you ate at the same restaurant every single day, you'd want to eat somewhere else every once in a while too. So I do think there's some ordering. They have the DoorDash and all those fun things now. So I think there is some of that. I don't think I know there's some of that. And then we also have done a good job partnering with a lot of food trucks. So, uh, between this campus and community campus, almost Monday through Friday, we have a food truck 